Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash Entitled Parents. In today's episode. My favorite local pizza place was wrecked by Entitled Mom and Dad with two, probably one in three, Hellions. Father kicked me out. ER visits and Disney trips don't grow on trees. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. My favorite local pizza place was wrecked by Entitled Mom and Dad with two, probably one in three, Hellions. This made my mom and I so angry at dinner the other night. From the start, the little kids were running around the table and the grounds of the restaurant. The mom occasionally held her younger child in her hands, knocking back into my mom's chair to make way for the space her child took up, and we had to move our table down because it kept happening. The children were starting to get more and more fussy, screaming and wailing, and the parents were just casually sitting at the table drinking their beers and watching their children run around. The most they ever did was pick up the little boy and walk him around the restaurant to try and calm him. They did absolutely nothing else to quiet the children and kept getting stares from everyone around the restaurant. This by no means is unusual behavior, but it gets worse. At one point, the little boy was sitting in an adult chair, playing with a pepper shaker. He was shaking it around sideways, and when we saw him get up off of the chair, there was a dense covering of pepper on all of the leather of the chair and across the floor. This is incredibly dangerous for so many reasons, he could have aspirated the finely ground black pepper and started choking, could have gotten it in his eyes and burned them, and could have caused slips from the powder on the floor. Not only this, but they dropped one of the styrofoam kids' cups of water from the table, jetting across the floor, and didn't say anything about it. This was around the time they were leaving and they got their check, paid, presumably without tip, and almost sprinted out of the restaurant without saying any apologies to the workers. My boyfriend works at this restaurant but was not in that night, so we are also very close to the staff and know most of them by name. The new busboy, maybe 15, very sweet and adorable might I add, looked in dismay as he saw the scene he had to clean up. My mom and I helped him wipe up some stuff, but he had it covered from there. We felt so bad. I'd have one of you ask to speak to the manager and say that another customer is ruining your dining experience and would they please do something about it? Now you might get some spineless manager who does jackal, but remember, you can leave a review online stating very specifically why your review is bad and warning other diners. We talked to the manager right after they left. We know him, and we're joking about crazy people like them. We didn't see the true extent of the situation until they left, but if we did we would have said something for sure. Just seems like an overreaction to talk to the manager about some whiny and busy kids since it's almost a daily occurrence, if not more. The restaurant staff have stopped them. I am actually super allergic to black pepper. It is a rare allergy but not unheard of. I was going to mention this. I have a very mild black pepper allergy, my throat just closes a bit, nose runs, and eyes sting. So interesting because I've never met another person with my allergy. Father kicked me out. I'll try to give a summary because the history is really long, so keep in mind that I will not expose every event and details. Back to 2021, my parents got divorced, and most of the household goods, like towels, dishes, cutlery, etc., were bought by my mother and she was the one leaving the house, and left those goods too because I stayed in the house with my father. Two months after, my father started dating my mother's friend, who I never got along with because she is a problematic person, and has a really bad reputation among our community. I had a fight with them because she was not only staying in the house after I asked to not bring her over, especially when my father was traveling for work, but also entering my room and touching my stuff. They are both compulsive liars and I found her stealing my clothes, some of them brand new, and then calling me fat by saying does it look like we wear the same size? And my father humiliated me so much and stood by her side so I decided to leave because I pretty much didn't have any other option. He did a lot more weird stuff like cancelling my SIM card without telling me knowing that I was living abroad and couldn't buy a card from our country and constantly lying, including about his debts, which put me and my mother in trouble. Now they apparently have a kid together, 
look like zombies, he lost everything, the cars, our apartment and me, constantly drunk and the social workers were going to their new house because someone reported that the baby was living under terrible conditions. Now he blames me and my mother for his situation and is obsessed with us, claiming that I'm evil because I don't want to have any contact with him after all his lies and feels entitled to respect and some kind of relationship, even though he was the one ruining everything. So change your number. Don't talk to him. It's pretty easy. Yeah, I have no contact with him anymore. He's not an entitled parent though. He's a bad parent, sure but I didn't see any evidence of entitlement in your post. You seemed more entitled when you tried to tell him he couldn't have his girlfriend over to his own house after the divorce. <laughs> ER visits and Disney trips don't grow on trees. Let's travel back to the year 1995. The glove didn't fit so the jury acquitted the most obvious murderer in the history of murder, the 49ers took the Chargers down in the Super Bowl, 49-26, TLC was dominating the top 40, and America tried to pick up the pieces after suffering a horrific tragedy in the Oklahoma City bombing. In the summer of 95 I was 4 years old, and I was visiting Disney World with my family. It was here, in Orlando, Florida, that another, less significant, sad story took place, and a young Opie saw her first glimpse of the truth about her egg and sperm donors. There, a bit messed up. And believe me, this story is only child's play compared to what they're capable of. Inside the Tiny Toons Market, on Main Street USA, we got two coffees, for them, and a milk, for me, and we were standing in line for the checkout when suddenly I changed my mind. My dad told me to go exchange the milk for what I wanted, so I made my way back to the beverage fridges. I had just about made it when I heard my mom screch my name, and scream at me to hurry up, because it was almost our turn at the queue. Being four, I took the advice to heart, and started running back up the snack aisle toward my destination. Smack! I fell on the slippery floor face first. I pushed myself up and felt a slight pain in my hand. Fun fact about the 90s, most juices, OJ especially, used to come in glass bottles, instead of the safe, less shiny ones seen today. When I stood up, there was blood, like a lot, oh, and a nifty big shard of glass stuck right through my left hand. And I mean big, like it extended at least two to three inches on either side. What did my dad say when he came to my aid? Something along the lines of shit, Opie, look what a mess you've made. And now we have to buy the wasted OJ, too. Hmm, not great. But it could be worse. He really fought the clerk about paying for the OJ. What did my mom say when she ran to my aid? Well, first of all, she never ran anywhere. She stayed in line. Demanding that the people behind her keep waiting for her to make a breakfast sandwich selection. Second, after buying her coffee and making her way over to me, she said, Damn it, Opie. Do you have any idea how much money I spent on these tickets? I might as well flush them down the drain, cause thanks to you, we all get to spend the day at the ER instead. Yeah, that's worse. What's even worse still? My dad and grandfather ended up taking me to, and waiting with me at, the ER all day, while my mom opted to generously stay at the park and take my cousins on the rides. She's super thoughtful like that. Again, I was only four when all this went down, and even though I actually do remember a lot of it, I can't be expected to remember the fine details. Thankfully I have my awesome, hilarious older cousin C, an eyewitness, to help fill in the gaps of this story. We hope you enjoyed. You got to go to Disney when you were four? My parents refused until I was ten and would remember it. It very obviously wasn't for the kid. And that's your main takeaway from the story? If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we will see you in the next video.